Starship's orbital launch tower receives an arm as major test campaigns are set to kick off this month. CRS-23 makes it to the space station. Inspiration4 is about to make history. Starlink may solve some of the problems created in Afghanistan. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Work continues on ground support equipment as SpaceX prepares to send their first Starship Super Heavy to orbit. On Tuesday morning, another GSE tank, number seven, was transported to the launch site, lending credence to the assumption that last week's tank test was a success. Another cryo shell followed down Highway 4 this morning. The orbital launch and integration tower that resides next to the tank farm was given its first of several arms. This quick disconnect arm will provide fuel, electricity, and stability to Starship prior to liftoff. The rocket catching arms are still under construction, however, closing in on completion, and will hopefully be used for the first time with the next booster, Booster 5. Of course, that will depend on how the first orbital test flight goes with Booster 4, which is still in the high bay, where it received its Raptor engines back and upgrades to its wiring. We can expect it to return back to the launch site very soon. Starship has already been there for several weeks, undergoing fixes and improvements to its heat shield, and looking noticeably better than it did last month. In the background of Starship Gazer's photo here, you see a few jets buzzing the tower, which was the crew of Inspiration4 just checking in on the rocket they wish they were flying on. But we'll get back to them in a minute. And SpaceX's new crane on order for Starbase was spotted by a fan in Germany. Elon said it will look like this when completed. Quite a rectifying. A new TFR was posted on the FAA's website a couple days ago, closing down airspace around Starbase for the entire month of September from the surface up to 10,000 feet. This is probably for the ground testing regimen to come for Booster 4 and Starship 20. However, this may turn into a case of hurry up and wait. Even if SpaceX completes all their testing this month and builds out the orbital launch site to meet their minimum requirements for launch, the fully stacked Starship Super Heavy could be left stranded on the orbital launch table, waiting for the FAA to complete their environmental assessment of the area. Not to be the bearer of bad news, but the worst case scenario would have it that the two-stage rocket would not launch this year at all. However, do keep in mind that it's critical to our national security that the development of U.S. space technology remain as unimpeded as possible. And that, along with public pressure from you, and of course Elon's pirate life attitude, could force the FAA and Congress to hurry things along and get the hell out of the way. But that's not the only obstacle in SpaceX's path to Earth orbit, the moon, Mars, and beyond. We already mentioned Blue Origin's new lawsuit against NASA in a previous episode, how they're deliberately trying to hinder Starship progress by pausing its $3 billion HLS payout, again, and now going as far as submitting hefty case files more than 7 gigabytes in size, causing the Department of Justice's Adobe software to crash. But GIF's other company, Amazon, is also attacking SpaceX's next-generation Starlink satellites. This, of course, after already filing a complaint last year with the FCC, trying to prevent SpaceX from putting sats at a lower orbit, you know, claiming they can't compete, as if the monopoly is one to talk. SpaceX and Elon have once again responded to Amazon's repeated attacks, pointing out that while Amazon has filed nothing with commission to address the requested conditions of its own license for nearly 400 days, it only took four days for them to object to SpaceX's next-generation non-geostationary satellite system. Filing legal actions against SpaceX is actually GIF's full-time job. And soon, GIF could be standing in the way of saving lives in Afghanistan, too. I'm sure you heard about the whole Afghanistan thing, right? Biden and his administration pulled out of the region so hastily and intelligently that 13 U.S. service members were killed by ISIS-K and the Taliban, whose protection Biden foolishly trusted in. And thousands of innocent Afghanis were executed as well, if not by the Taliban, then by our own drones. Tens of billions of dollars of our military equipment was left behind for these Islamic terrorists to have, along with the lives of hundreds of American citizens who are still stranded, despite what Jen Psaki will lie to you. What were you lying? Biden had those weapons reports erased from federal websites, by the way. And Democrats blocked a transparency bill on the issue, despite telling the American people that they would be the most transparent administration. In a phone call between Biden and Afghanistan president slash coward Ashraf Ghani just over a month ago, Joe said, quote, I need not tell you the perception around the world and in parts of Afghanistan, I believe, is that things are not going well in terms of the fight against the Taliban. And there is a need, whether it's true or not, there is a need to project a different picture. Yeah, I would say that's much worse than asking a foreign president to investigate fraud in their country. Impeach the traitors. Yet, despite all of what I just told you, those in power and sheep in the media will still try to convince you the withdrawal was a success. 
But in reality, evacuations that did happen were in spite of Biden and those around him. It was the troops on the ground, including the British and French, nonprofit charities, and veterans who stood in defiance of the State Department that saved lives. Now, a former Navy intelligence officer is saying she would love it if SpaceX would just flood Afghanistan with Starlink so that there is a way for us to maintain communication with our Afghan partners. Because again, our leadership is derp, so leave it to US citizens to continue picking up the slack. Our satellites launching in the next few months have satellite laser links, so no local downlink needed. Four to six months. And if the Taliban, who is in charge, doesn't like it, they can try shaking their fists at the sky. On Sunday morning, SpaceX launched their 23rd resupply mission to the space station, the first time they used a recycled Cargo Dragon 2 capsule. It rendezvoused and docked autonomously and successfully on Monday, and the booster's fifth flight did some nighttime cloud licking while coming in hot to land on a shortfall of Gravitas's deck, christening it. Said booster reached port on Tuesday and was parked next to fairing recovery ship Doug, who arrived earlier on Monday. Bob's trip has been delayed due to Hurricane Ida. SpaceX has confirmed the next Starlink launches later this month. The booster that will lift the payload out of the denser parts of Earth's atmosphere has completed its static fire and will take off out of Vandenberg Space Force Station. But Inspiration4 is the next scheduled SpaceX launch, slated for September 15th. Here they stand before their newly renovated crew capsule that contains the first Dragon Cupola for their viewing pleasure during the three-day orbital vacation. And now it's time for today's Honorable Mention. Since their company's inception in 2014, Firefly Aerospace launched their first Alpha rocket on a test flight from Vandenberg on September 2nd. But two and a half minutes after liftoff, 10 seconds after going supersonic, the rocket keeled over and exploded. At this time, no cause for the anomaly is known, but Firefly did release a statement claiming nobody was injured and a number of their mission objectives were still met. Eh, at least they outperformed Astra. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for tuning in. A very special thanks goes out to those of you supporting the show on Patreon through YouTube's join feature or by leaving coins in the comments below. Have a nominal weekend and until next time, Godspeed.